Hello, it's Wednesday afternoon, the 30th of September 2021 here in Sydney, which means last night was uh, Tuesday, the 29th of September in the US. I thought we might have a bit of a look at the US market, uh, look at the state of it, see how things are, are shaping up, and perhaps see if we can find a few beacons of light. All right, so we'll go straight to the charts. Um, this, of course, is the S&P 500 index. Um, as you can see, it um, had a bit of a nasty fall at the beginning of last week, tried to claw its way back, and again this week has been down, uh, had a 2% fall on Monday, and didn't do all that well on Tuesday. Um, the broader Russell 3000 index paints a very similar picture. So both of them uh, are a little bit under pressure at the moment, and it seems that perhaps there is room for a bit more of a dip. Um, now these indexes, both of them are market capitalization weighted indexes, which means that the biggest companies have the biggest impact on these indexes. Um, now what I've got coming up next is the eight largest stocks in terms of daily turnover, dollar term turnover, um, from Tuesday's session, uh, and you can see how they are affecting the indexes. Now. <laughs> Uh, the first one I'm going to look at actually probably had a positive impact, uh, Tesla. A um, bit of an increase yesterday, not much, uh, half a percent, but actually it's not looking too bad. It's holding up um, pretty well. But then when we go to the next ones on the list, uh, it's looking a little bit less rosy. So Apple, as you can see, has um, been struggling to hold on to, uh, to those highs. It's, it's fallen off a bit. Um, Amazon also having a bit of a pullback. Uh, Microsoft this week has broken down a bit. Uh, advanced micro devices also looking a bit soft. Facebook as well, uh, and Nvidia, and Moderna. So these eight companies, um, and of course there are more, but I didn't want to go through the whole list. Um, but they are having a negative impact on on the index. So on both of the indices. Um, so I thought we'd look a little bit further afield and see if we could find a few uh, a few beacons of light, as I said. Um, one that sort of popped up fairly quickly was uh, Netflix. Now, this is actually looking pretty good. And if we look at uh, a weekly chart of Netflix, you can see it was consolidating for pretty much most of the past year, in fact, a little bit more than a year. And this month, um, September, it's popped higher. And you'd have to say, really, at the moment, although the volume has been dropping off, which is not a great sign, but um, it looks reasonably positive for Netflix. Um, so I have to keep a bit of an eye on that. Um, some other companies that popped onto my radar, um, there are a lot of uh, smaller financial companies and banks across the US. Now, they might be decent sized companies in their own right, but um, not exactly uh, household names outside of the US. Um, now the first one I've got here on the list is Comerica, CMA. Um, it's been really strong recently. Uh, another one is Zion's Band Corporation, Bank Corporation, Zion. Uh, it's also quite strong. Uh, another one, Coastal Financial Corp, CCB. Uh, those are the three daily charts. If I just change this to weekly for a minute. Uh, so here's Comerica, CMA, and Zion's Bank Corp. Uh, Zion is the symbol for that, and then Coastal Financial, CCB. Um, of these three, I would probably say that CCB would be my pick. Um, I just love this expanding volume as we break out of the range here of the consolidation band. Uh, so that's all quite interesting. Now, something else that really did, uh, there is another, another group of companies that really sort of stuck out when I was doing this search. Um, you've probably heard that there is globally a shortage of semiconductors and microchips, and this has led to car manufacturers around the world having to slash production. Uh, now, that has meant that there's been a, a you know, strong demand for used cars, and of course, people have to look after those used cars and service them. And so it probably won't be too much of a surprise that auto parts retailers have been doing very well in recent times. So back to the charts. Um, First one I've got here on the list is Advance Auto Parts Inc. AAP. So you can see it's looking okay. Um, AZO Auto Zone. That's had a really strong uh, start to the week this week. Uh, O'Reilly Automotive, another strong one, and Auto Nation AN. 
Uh, those were the daily charts. Again, let's go to weeklies. So this is Advanced Auto Parts, AAP. You can see that's been you know consolidating a bit, but it's pushed higher in recent days, weeks. AutoZone, really strong. Uh, O'Reilly, another one that's also been really strong. And lastly, AutoNation. Now this one's been strong with expanding volume. Um, I do have to point out that I think it was Morgan Stanley who recently uh, downgraded the outlook for both AutoZone and O'Reilly. But um, you'd have to say that the market seems to have other ideas. Anyway, of these four, I think probably uh, AutoNation would be my pick of, of those ones. Um, so there you go. That might give you a few ideas. There's a bit of a glimmer of hope there. It's always worth looking outside of the, the big names when you're looking at the US. It's such a big market, a lot of opportunity. There's always something that looks interesting. If you found this video useful, um, please like it, follow us, uh, share it with your friends. Let us know that it's good, if it is, and uh, we'll do some more for you. So come back again, have another look. Please remember that this video contains general information only and does not take into account your personal objectives, financial situations or needs. Uh, we recommend that you seek independent advice and ensure that you fully understand the risks before trading.